Step into the outside. Take a look around. Have you noticed? Nature is different than it used to be, and not just in your yard, but around the world. Drier summers, fiercer storms, milder winters. The weather seems to be all over the map, and it's been that way for a while now. The Earth's climate is changing. Climate is a long-term average of weather conditions over time and tells us what it's usually like outside in a particular place. Climate change means that weather patterns are changing over time. It's not just that temperatures become hotter or cooler, but also that there are changes in precipitation and snowfall from what we're used to. Over the last 100 years or so, temperatures rose by about one degree Fahrenheit and scientists predict that the temperatures might increase an additional three to eight degrees over the next 100 years. This is what is meant by the phrase global warming. Scientists believe that the Earth is heating up from an excess amount of greenhouse gases humans are releasing into the atmosphere when we burn fuel to produce the energy that powers factories, buildings, homes, and cars or when we throw rotting garbage into landfills. Greenhouse gases are a natural part of the environment and they trap heat to keep the earth warm. However, greenhouse gas levels are higher than they've been for thousands of years and are increasing rapidly, causing the earth to get hotter. Climate change is very complicated, but experts agree that accelerated rising global temperatures have already put some of our natural world at risk and will likely alter the makeup of entire ecosystems. While in many situations humans can get used to changes in the environment, fish, animals, and plants aren't so lucky. As our climate continues to change, wildlife, especially those that are threatened or endangered, will either adapt to changes or they may disappear forever. Your habitat is your home, your school, and your neighborhood among other places where you frequently spend your time. All living things rely on their habitats, but climate change is affecting where creatures, plants, and trees can live. What food is available and whether they can adapt fast enough to rapidly changing conditions to guarantee their species' long-term survival. Yes, even trees need the right environment to thrive and survive. Rising temperatures are already changing the environment and some of the most intense climate-related habitat changes are those affecting glaciers and ice fields in polar and subpolar climates. Glaciers are large sheets of moving ice, and they are retreating or melting at record rates, much faster than experts had predicted. Grinnell Glacier in Montana's Glacier National Park used to cover 576 acres. Now it barely covers 200 acres and might be gone altogether by the year 2030. Farther north, in the land of ice and sea, Alaska and other Arctic areas are sounding the alarm as a watch place for what climate change can do to wild lands and habitat for humans and animals alike. Over the last several decades, temperatures in the Arctic have increased at almost twice the rate of temperatures throughout the rest of the world. Large, thick ice flows are the favorite habitat of the Pacific walrus. It's where they hunt for food and they move with the winds and ocean currents of larger polar ice fields. In recent years, because of warmer temperatures, the sea ice has become much thinner and is breaking up earlier in the year. This pushes mothers and babies onto land where they have to abandon their feeding grounds and the calves risk getting trampled where the herd is condensed into a smaller place. Walrus numbers are going down and we fear it's because of melting ice. If walruses are having trouble going with the flow, the safety and survival of other ocean-dependent species have become a daily concern, too. When ice pack and glaciers melt into the ocean, they cause sea level to rise. Global warming also causes ocean water to heat up and expand, which also adds to sea level. Scientists predict that sea level may continue to rise as much as three feet during the next century, eroding coastline, beaches, and precious wildlife ecosystems. Habitat loss and alteration collectively is a huge challenge for wildlife conservation as it is. You throw in climate change into the mix and it adds another layer of complexity. We're losing land to development, 
to beachfront property, and we're also going to witness sea level rise in the future. The Diamondback Terrapin is a great model to consider when thinking about the power of climate change and the impacts that humans have had on the environment. Turtles have managed to survive for 200 million years, but they haven't fared as well in the modern world. The endangered Diamondback Terrapin lives solely in tidal salt marshes. These are a type of low-lying coastal wetlands, which contain brackish or a mixture of salt and fresh water. As the water level rises, turtles lose their beachfront, which is critical for their nesting habitat. The salinity of their habitat increases, and that's also not good for them. Because of human-built structures, such as seawalls and roadways, turtles have no way for their habitat to move inland. So you see hatched diamondback terrapins trying to cross busy roads trying to get to the ocean. And as a result, some of their populations could go extinct. Higher air temperatures are causing glaciers to melt, sea level to rise, and our oceans, rivers, and lakes to heat up. Below the surface, warmer water temperatures are harming coral reefs, like the one off the coast of the Florida Keys. Coral reefs are colorful, living underwater ecosystems that act as natural protection for the coasts. Recently, as ocean temperatures become warmer and the ocean becomes more acidic, this is causing some of the corals to die. If the corals die, it can sometimes be difficult for the reef to come back to life. Warmer temperatures will also impact other types of waterways, including rivers, lakes, and streams, home to a variety of freshwater fish species. Throughout their life cycle, from spawning through incubation and rearing stages, species like salmon and trout need cool water and good water flow to survive. While predictions of climate change are serious for all freshwater fish, they are becoming dire for trout. It doesn't take a big jump in water temperature to wipe out a population of our native brook trout. The Appalachians are a really interesting habitat area. In the lower elevations of the Appalachians, as much as 97% of the brook trout populations could be impacted by climate change. Another potential consequence associated with climate change is more frequent and severe drought. In national and state forests, parks, and wildlife refuges, wildfires may become much harder to control and alter the composition of the forest, places we've set aside to protect. Drought could also devastate populations of migratory birds, especially those using the prairie pothole region in the Midwest as their annual flyway to Canada. The prairie pothole region of the U.S. Northern Plains in southern Canada is absolutely critical for North American waterfowl. Here, millions of small, shallow, seasonally flooded wetlands provide breeding habitat for half of North America's ducks. With climate change, these wetlands are likely to be dry more often when the ducks need them to breed and raise their young. In years with fewer prairie potholes, the birds will either have to migrate elsewhere to poorer quality habitat or stay here and likely raise fewer offspring. Birds are on the wing flying further north and it's possible that even the songbirds we see every day in our yards and parks will fly away in search of a better home. But birds are not alone in their quest for a more suitable climate. From bees to balsam fir trees, woodpeckers to whales, the direction is pointing north toward cooler temperatures. But what happens when there are no longer cooler temperatures even up north? The wildlands that wildlife depend on will continue to change right before our eyes. Nature is different than it used to be. But that doesn't mean we're powerless to help protect our natural treasures. Around the country, every day, people of all ages are helping to change the climate forecast, and you can too. Think about the things you use every day that use power. Lights, TVs, computers. Just remember to turn them off when you're not using them. Also, remember the three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Become your family's 3R director, encouraging them to reduce, reuse, and recycle around the house. By saving energy and keeping trash out of landfills, you can reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that enter the atmosphere and contribute to climate change. You can also directly help wildlife and wildlands adapt to climate change by lending a hand. Animals and plants could use it because they can't always cope on their own. Get your friends and family involved. 
sign up to clean up a local stream or a park or the beach. Ask your family to conserve water. You wouldn't want to live in an area that was surrounded by garbage, so treat your environment the way that you treat your own home. One thing you can do is to bring the environment to you. Create a backyard habitat to attract birds and frogs and other little organisms. And you can do this by planting native uh, wildflowers and trees and shrubs, and this will make a perfect home for them. Why not become a citizen scientist? You could join a green study like Project Budburst to record the budding dates and flowering dates of plants in your neighborhood. Or you could count birds as part of the great backyard bird count. There are lots of projects out there. We use the data collected to help us understand what's happening with any particular species. Are seasons changing? Are migration patterns changing? And that helps us understand how climate change is affecting the world around us. Or how about this? Get creative and design your own special project to help animals who are losing their habitats due to climate change or human development. Well, I think if you want to know more about climate change, the first thing you have to do is get outside and get to know how things work. One thing you can't do is care about something if you don't know it. And one of the best ways of knowing the outdoors and the environment is to get out in it and get dirty in it. There are many actions that you can take today to help nature adapt to the threats of climate change. And what affects fish, animals, and plants affects people too. The health of wildlife is often an early warning of disease and pollution that touch us all. Like healthy bodies, healthy populations and habitats are better equipped to survive. If everybody does a little something every day, even the smallest effort will make a big difference for wildlife and wildlands everywhere.